to. He's a politician. Exactly. Hey. Hey. That's a good way. <laughs> President Hanson. <laughs> we have tried to continue that tradition of service in our family. We have, my wife and I have been youth group leaders for middle and high school kids. We have refurbished classrooms in East Palo Alto. We've taken our boys down to Mexico and Central America to serve people out there. And it's all based on this abiding belief that through service, through small miracles, we can make a difference in people's lives. And as we go out and serve with people and serve in the communities alongside people, you also realize that government has a big impact on ordinary people's lives. And the decisions, wise or unwise, create huge swings. And when those swings go the wrong way, we rush in as a community, as nonprofits, as churches, as volunteers, as neighbors, to try to heal the wounds and fill the gap. But those swings hurt a lot of people in the process. There are unwise decisions that cost us jobs and undermine our schools. Decisions that endanger our children. Decisions that chip away at our freedoms or lessen our equality. Decisions that can take away the compassionate services we need to provide for the people who need them most. But there is hope. <laughs> we have an abiding hope. We have an urgent call to action that wiser elected officials can make wiser decisions. That statesmen and stateswomen will bridge our communities, not divide them. That special interests will not tear the community apart, but we will realize we are one community and we are all in this together. That we can realize that we can build a better future for our families and our kids and our grandkids. And that is why we have an urgent call to action. We have a call to action to go out and find those rare great people who can be elected officials and get them elected. We have an obligation to find those courageous leaders and to link arms with them and say, we will walk with you. We have an obligation to find those great people. Well, I am here tonight to tell you that I have found <laughs> one of those rare great people. I have found someone who is not afraid to tackle the tough systemic problems in California. I found someone who has innovative ideas about how we can make our communities better. I found someone who is not afraid to look and crack down on people who are using fraud or abuse on the people who are most vulnerable in our communities. I have found the kind of person who can make us proud as the next Attorney General of California, and that person is Kamala Harris. And that is why we formed Silicon Valley for Kamala because service belongs back in government. And we are out there, we are raising awareness, we are raising support, we are spreading the word, we are generating ideas, and if you join with us, we will link arms with Kamala and we will work with her until she is the next Attorney General of California. Uh, go, I, I got to take you to a small town in Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stick right here in Silicon Valley. Um, but I, I want to take a couple of moments to share with you why this, uh, why your support and this community support is so critical. And I'll draw from my own experiences in the last couple of years. Um, you know, for the election of President Barack Obama, Silicon Valley was one of the earliest pocket of support. And it set the tone for the rest of the country. And as you know, you say, as of course California, the rest of the country follows that. Clearly, in his, in, in his candidacy as well, this region, you folks played a critical role. Not just shaping his candidacy, but also shaping his positions. Whether it's clean tech, whether it's emphasis on education, whether it's innovation, rule of science, all those things started from here. Um, and we saw how that created a momentum. So it's very critical 
that as we uh, look at state races, we throw our weight behind folks um, who we believe are compelling because your support will make a difference. Not just in terms of resources, because we will make that ask as well of resources, but also in terms of helping develop policy positions. So hence, uh, um, just to build on what Craig said, we are looking for Silicon Valley for, for Kamala to become uh, you know, a, a key pillar of the campaign uh, to elect uh, Kamala Harris uh, for the Attorney General of California. Let me secondly quickly share with you my experience with, uh, with Kamala and how I got to know her as a friend and I'm uh, humbled to have the opportunity to support this right now. Uh, we got to know each other through during the course of the Obama campaign, whether it was, uh, we did a number of events, uh, Denver Convention, uh, at, the at the inauguration, that historic night uh, on November 4th in Chicago. And it's quite an experience when you are at, that, uh, at those places and events. You've got leadership um, of one of the two national political parties gathered from around the country. You've got you know, local leaders, state leaders, uh, national politicians, luminaries. And I want to make, I'm actually going to make a couple of blush when I say this, that she stood out in those crowds. Um, she is a star among stars. She is a rising star among rising stars. And we are so lucky, frankly, to have uh, uh, this opportunity to have this compelling candidate, and you will know this when you hear her speak. Um, so hence, our support and your support is vital. Um, and it's not, by the way, again, just uh, supporting her, it's supporting what she represents, and that is critical. And we won't steal her thunder, she will go into detail about what her positions are. So without further ado, join me in welcoming Kamala Harris. and long-standing friendships, which I'm sure we have, which is just, you know, things just start to unfold and revelations occur that make you even feel even better about the, the connection. So you two are wonderful. And, and I'll tell you, these two, they, they, they did find me, and they, they reached out and then came, and they said, we, we not only want to support you by writing a check and talking to our friends, but we really want to be involved. And this is the, the, the truest sign of generosity and friendship. They said, and we want to share with you everything we know so that we can then in help inform you because this is what this process is about. And so one afternoon in particular, these two came down, met with me in our offices in San Francisco, my campaign office, and we just sat down and, and I had a pen and paper and just listened to them talk about all of the work that you two do as leaders in Silicon Valley. And so for all of those things, for all of those reasons, I thank you both publicly as I have privately for being so supportive and such great friends and such great leaders. So thank you both. And in terms of elected leadership, Ira Rasmus was here, I think he had to leave. Um, and then Ash Kalara, of course, is a great leader and a dear friend. And then Sally Lieber, the former legislator who has decided that she wanted to be happy, and so she walked away. <laughs> <laughs> she walked away when the time was right, but not after having done incredible work as a leader in Sacramento. Particularly, she and I worked together on um, the creation, her bill of legislation that resulted in human trafficking being a crime in the state of California. So I want to thank you all. spending these uh, couple hours of your evening um, with us and, and being interested in hearing about the DA of San Francisco and the work I plan to do as the next Attorney General for the state of California. Um, I want to start my comments by sharing with you my background. I know some of you, I don't know all of you, and I think my background puts in perspective the decisions I've made and, and, and the work that I intend to do as we go forward. So starting at the very beginning, um, I am the daughter, one of two daughters of parents who met when they were graduate students at the University of California, Berkeley in the 60s. <laughs> so you're getting the picture. <laughs> and they met when they were both very actively involved in the civil rights movement. Um, so I grew up in a community and in an environment where all of the adults around us were pretty much spending full time shouting and marching uh, about this thing called justice. And so growing up, um, the heroes for me in that civil rights movement were the architects, of course, of that great movement, and they were the lawyers. So it was Thurgood Marshall and Charles Hamilton Houston and Constance Baker Motley. Uh, 